welcome to the No Print Management podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Felipe Ribeiro from Conica Malta Europe. Um, Felipe, thanks very much for joining. Oh, thank you very much to you, Adam, to, for this kind invitation. And uh, I'm very pleased and uh, it's an honor to be here also with you having this, this conversation around uh, the topic of No Print Management. I wonder if we might start with an introduction to you, your role, a little bit of your background and career. Yeah, of course. My name is, is like, like I said, Felipe Ribeiro. I'm a, I'm a Portuguese uh, guy living in, in Madrid, in Spain. I worked for Conica Minolta since 2000, 2012. Yeah, almost yeah, 12 years already, almost in next year. And um, I have been, uh, I started my role in Conica Minolta working from a country. We are divided in Conica Minolta in, in countries in Knox, what we call it is national operation companies. And I started in Spain. Uh, and then I moved in 2015 to, um, to our headquarters in, the, in Europe, which is located in, in the area of Hanover in Germany. And I stayed there for four years and I came back to Madrid, to Spain, um, exactly in 2019 before the, the COVID in August, COVID started uh, December, January next year in 2020. And, um, in, in that moment I was already, I, when I moved to, 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 to Hanover, I was working at uh, marketing, international marketing division, also taking care of the relationship with service providers, also for print management, like 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 myself in this case. And then I moved to uh, global business services. Global business services is our uh, division that takes care only for GMA accounts. I mean, global major accounts, um, accounts that the clients that they have uh, location in Europe, but also in the US, in a back region globally. And we, we are handling and managing those accounts from inbound and outbound means yeah. like we support them if they move to, uh, they have offices in the U S and we coordinate globally with our, uh, rocks, which means stands for regional operation companies in a region and, uh, us and so Europe. you end up dealing with some of the biggest customers worldwide, I guess. Yes, we are. We are. It's, uh, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very. Very interesting role because I'm um, I, I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of uh, uh, leading, trying to be a leader of a, a very a small team of uh, enterprise architects or consultants, IT consultants. That we, our mission inside of the GBS structure is to um, build that relationship with the with those uh, global major accounts. Understand their strategy, their IT strategy. Concerning to our core business, of course, print management and and and, and further, also um, solutions like ECM and workflows and, and all things related to the document. And as we all know, documents are our business. We have been printing documents for so many years, but also the document, the life cycle of a document, yeah, and um, and also that how that life cycle of a document is in, inside of what we call it the workplace. Uh, not of the, the, the intelligent connected workplace, how, how that is work, where, how do access to that information and also taking care of a very important topics now day, like security is, 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 is a, a complete holistic approach that we have from our day. So, so, so take us into that approach or take us into where the customers are. So the, these Conoco Minolta's biggest global customers, what kind of things are they asking for? What are the, the specific challenges and, and how has that evolved in the last few years? Yeah. It, it's uh, the, 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 the COVID was a, a booster for a lot of things. Okay. We, we, it's interesting to see that, um, from bad things could come good things <laughs> yeah. concerning also speed and, uh, and, and on processes on projects that even some, those, uh, big enterprise, they have it, but they have it there because as we know, it's complicated sometimes to. The, to, to, to take decisions, to, 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 to have that mindset, to change yeah. and, uh, big companies, big enterprises, um, sometimes the, 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 they are not so agile. Yeah. Uh, maybe S and B are more agile, more small, more easy to take decisions. Um, also the risks are less, but also the big enterprises, they are to take into consideration their global footprint or pan European footprint is complicated. They try to yeah. see the best, uh, uh, solutions to be, to have that kind of harmonization and that, that solution, if they have a, a centralized approach, they, that is also in, important to have. And if even they have a decentralized approach, they need to coordinate the things 
to have a, a more, I mean, like maybe for the future, building something for the future when the change uh, operates, because we, we know that we, we can be talking about hybrid approach, like, okay, yeah. let's get some start, see some uh, yeah. such yeah. one here, but then we want to move to this another direction is, is uh, how we, uh, we see it. Like I said, the booster, I mean, the, the, the COVID, uh, the, the, neg the positive things of, of negative things are that, that those projects were very, uh, they, 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 they were flowing very rapidly during the COVID and also after they are still there and that there is a trend that has changed completely in Europe at least is like uh, the, the enterprises, the big companies, the global major accounts are demanding. It's not, a, it's not a trend now. It's uh -huh. a, it's the, it's almost the, the, the rule that every tender, every, sometimes even renewal of contracts that we have at the, uh, with the Gemini, uh, global major accounts, they are focused on cloud, mm -hmm. cloud, cloud print management. Okay. It's a. Uh, now is that the exception is happening uh, that is uh, in the other way is like uh, we, we, when we, we see a tender or, or a renewal and we see the, the, the requirements of the client says, oh, on premise, <laughs> that is the exception is not the, the, the thing. Of course, very complex is uh, the, the size and complexity could be, uh, I mean, a, a very big effort. Also, there is things like, uh, like, uh, uh, the lack of awareness, how to do it the migration and how to migrate that, that. the features, because we need to understand that the, the feature wise, what we have on, on premise, what the client has on premise, it cannot be deployed immediately on in the cloud. There is features that there are not there. Okay. And that, that is the, the, the market and, the, and, 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 and companies like Ysoft are doing a big effort to develop those kind of tools and those kind of yeah. things just to match, uh, and the same offer that we have been handling and managing for many years with on-premise uh, uh, platforms. Okay. That, that is, is the, um, is the point, but also the cost of infrastructure. I mean, the, 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 what we see is that, and even that a lot of people is coming back to the offices after the COVID still, there is, there is something there that, 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 that came with the, with the, with the COVID and stay there, which is the hybrid work. Okay. That, that worker, that, that worker needs to have the workplace is not something that is already located in a, lo a specific location. Uh, that worker is someone that it travels around or goes to home. And sometimes maybe they have a, a, a own device at home and, and, and the, and the company needs to take care of the security, how it's the, that life cycle of the document, like I was just saying, yeah. But I, uh, it's kind of interesting. So, so COVID is this sort of booster in a way for the industry, at least for customers to start making changes short term, wanting a greater level of agility, wanting more flexibility. And now you're sort of seeing that play out over a longer term as the hybrid work trend catalyzed, I guess, by COVID customers are now having to readdress everything they do and say, how, how do we deliver a, a print platform for the hybrid work for the hybrid world where, where our end users actually want to be working anywhere. Yeah, exactly. That, that is the, 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 the point, but even that for a, a vendor like, like us, and also for the rest of the vendors uh, that, that we, we know is, is, is complicated, um, to handle and to manage sometimes these big changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the focus now stays also in our side, in our team as how to manage the platform how to make the things easier from the user perspective. Yeah. The users, the users could be SMB, could be enterprise. The users are very smart people right now. Mm -hmm. They make things smart that the, the people use the, 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 their, their cell phones and the, this is the, their platform. Everything is here. They want to print, yeah. they want to print, they want to access to the cloud, a secure cloud to check everything, to check their outlook, their, uh, email, you name it. They, they, they are used to that. And. And if the, the, the easiness, I mean, to be easy access to, to their print platform, yeah. or also not only print platform, also to capturing those documents, the workflows to activate yeah. something is something that, that it, it, it comes in that way. It's like, I, I always use that kind of example. Like there is processes, business process that in the past three, in the past three years ago, maybe an expense report, 
the, just the expenses that you make, like you go in, ta on, in, in the taxi, you go to a restaurant, you decline, and then you take the bus, you take the train, whatever, you have that expense. In the past, you have it to, to collect those, very important, because it's, it was your well, uh, sometimes your money, and then you, you have to collect those, you have to put it in an Excel file, you have to print it out, put it in a plastic tray, that plastic it, tray somebody collect at the end of the week, take it to the... To the to the to the to the manager for approval, they get the, the approval. That paper is, is 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 live, and then go to accounting and so on. We brought this kind of new solutions like uh, expense management report tools, like uh, an application. Take the picture. You can even throw in certain countries. You can throw away the ticket. It, yeah. That is an automatic workflow. You put it there, and this is is done. Yeah, and th that those kind of workflows are are here to stay. Yeah, not going back to the to the to the past. Yeah. That is the adaptation, and and that is our focus is to look for that, but also a, cl a client demand. Yeah, and it's a big challenge, I think, for printing companies. Where I mean, fundamentally, the devices are on premise; they don't move. Even if the users are moving around, the devices are typically big enough that they're not going in the back of the car. They're they're staying where they are. So users need to be able to move across multiple networks, multiple buildings, multiple offices, maybe even not a network, just an internet connection. And yeah. they're still expecting all of those services in exactly the same way, right? In the same way. That is the, that is the challenge, like you said. That is the challenge. I I just came this this week. I I went to to Frankfurt from Madrid. Like I said, I live here and take my plane. Went to Frankfurt, and uh, and then um, I moved my car to Kaiserslautern, and, and I I was in several um, offices. Uh, one was at the office of uh, our office in Frankfurt in Kronkemilte. It was easy for me. We have our own platform for the cloud and I was able to uh, uh, um, to authenticate myself and to print and to have and to scan if I needed to scan anything to our OneDrive uh, cloud. And also in the other company, even that they were not belonging to to the, 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 as a, a spin-off company, that we were there having our devices and I was able to connect, like you said, through the web browser of the panel of the machine to connect to the platform. Yeah, yeah. It's like this kind of behavior is what the, at least the user respects you. Yeah. And so at a customer at a customer requirements level, I think you're saying a lot of the customers that you're talking with are challenging you first and foremost on delivering a service to the user, right? Delivering an outcome to the user. Yeah. But that's where they still are. What what's the wider sort of corporate challenges that they have? What are the other things that they're asking you to take care of? I mean, they 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 there is a, a I, I like always to to be a storyteller. Yeah, I was engaging with a client in the direct client in the, in August, and um, it, the, the 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 information that we had from the key account manager from this client is a very conservative client uh, with um, a global footprint, even in the US, uh, South Africa, and the rest of the European countries. And um, they 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 have been very conservative. They have their own data centers located in a country in Europe, okay. And uh, and we have this approach. We we set up a meeting with the with the IT um, responsibles for the global project for the print management, and um, we decided uh, to take some risks and to have an open conversation and also to present a uh, cloud print plan. And um, and and in the in the first moment, I was saying we have. Our cloud platform here, we're going to talk about it and we have even a, a demo in, in real time, but also take in consideration that what you can have, we can have it on premise because I know that, and I understand that maybe you have con certain concerns and security and so on. And it was, I was trying to save, the, trying to understand, the, trying to have an open conversation. And in some moment, the, the, the responsible for the company says, oh, don't worry. <laughs> That's it's a, where you have it. Oh, it's in the cloud. It's located in Germany. So there's no problem. Yeah, it also that they, they were having a requirement to have it, the, the hosting of the platform in Europe because of mm -hmm. GDPR, GDPR compliance, as you know. And um, I said, yeah, we don't want to have it. Yes, we have our data centers, but it's our legacy that we are trying to reduce, mm -hmm. like ERP, CRM, and so on. And that is it. We are to focus on the things and the print management. And that kind of, oh, you take it. I want yep. to print as a service. That is the the, okay. the main trend that we, that we will see today. No, no, no. You take responsibility. You fulfill a, a, an amount of requirements about security, TLS, HTTPS, all the other things that we need to fulfill. And we take responsibility for the infrastructure as a service and the print management as a service. Yeah, that yeah. is what we 
I'm looking for. Uh, and how and do they money to come from a conservative country? Uh, how do they want to? Uh, my my first my head goes straight to commercials. How do they want to buy it? Is it still the sort of typical MPS contract wrapped into page volumes and click counts and and everything bundled into that click? Or the, the most part of the GMA accounts are looking for, um, like I said, print as a service. I, no PAS, there's no platform. Hey. But they, they, they see uh, this as a service and this included. There is some clients that we are already working in that sense. Okay. But the business model has changed. Has changed from, you know, CapEx to OPEX <laughs> and so on yeah. for that, uh, for that meaning. They, 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 they want to have more and they also believe that the cloud even could be, uh, that, that, that I, we don't feel in Europe, at least no, no constraints now to go to the cloud. Of course. The, we are, they are demanding for us to fulfill a high level of security in that sense. Yeah. But they understand not only the part of the budget, okay, not to have it as a service, but also a lot of other concerns that the big companies they have. And we are, we don't need to forget that is not a trend that is a, a rule. It's like sustainability, ESGs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because they don't want to keep servers running <laughs> just to have print management. They want to reduce their own energy for print in that sense. And that is moving to the cloud. Also, they are demanding, they are asking even for our certifications, ISOs and so on, to understand where it's located and how to okay. reduce. That is, is a major concern for uh, big companies in Europe also. Yeah. But, and so when you say the deployed as a service, that means an annual subscription based on numbers of users, numbers of printers, numbers of pages, like depends. how are they commuting? It, it, it depends. That is a very uh, customizable part. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the client, depends on the relationship that we have with the client. Okay, that, that, that and, and there is some clients that they want to have, a, a, let's, let's say, a, a, the business model as a service. Not, I don't want to pay for you. I want to play per user and you just put me here. This is the cost that they yeah. have. I don't want to take care of the MFP. I don't want to take care of the donor. You provide that. And that has a cost, like okay. a flat rate. Okay. There is already uh, several, we already have that model in place that we are taking to those conversations with existing clients. And uh, because a good thing that we have in Codic Motor, we have a 95% of rotation of our <laughs> global major <laughs> accounts. And that is always the, 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 that we are bringing innovation on the business model to our clients to see how we should change this. And uh, and then um, and, and I like that it's not just a technology conversation, right? It's about business model as much as it is about tech. I think. Yeah, exactly. But, but technology, if we are talking about no print management cloud, it's related because okay. also the the cost effectiveness is there. Yeah, I, I think increasingly customers are laying out sort of technical requirements and saying, as long as you can prove these things, then it becomes a business model conversation, which yeah. I. Exactly. For me, at least, it's kind of an exciting time for print to be able to have this conversation about a change in the industry. Like you said, the booster of COVID and now kind of, I guess we're three years on since the, well, maybe nearly four years since the start of COVID. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We're kind of into this new space of, okay, customers are ready for this change, ready to do something different. And actually there's a real conversation to be had, which I think is an exciting time for the industry and, and for the account teams. Yeah, it is. It is. There is still like a, in, in every system, there is still constraints. Like, a, like I said, there is a, a companies that they have a big footprint. I imagine like, um, construction companies. Okay. And then we need to adapt and then we need to have hybrid models. Okay. Yeah. Because if you are located in the construction site in the middle of near to the Sahara desert, <laughs> you know, because there, there is a huge amount of uh, solar panels fields, okay? mm -hmm. maybe your bandwidth <laughs> and connection to the cloud to open load will not be the same. Yeah. That, that, that we need to take into consideration when we are talking about the Western world and we are talking about the US or Canada, Singapore, Japan, it's, but depends yeah. even the location. Yeah. That yeah. is uh, something that cloud is not covering everything. And then the, is, that is, that is uh, what I said today. And. I'm very proud to, to have this senior team people that the consultancy is to understand, to listen more, uh, we, something that we also as a vendor and our core business is printing for many years, how we address those things, bringing that also not like moving the MFP from the center and to be a, a very important tool. Okay. On that 
document life cycle. Yeah. It's an interesting one in a way because I, you're really describing access to internet and at as an at absolutely core fundamental and living in a, a city in Western Europe, it's very easy to take for granted. But our customers' businesses are so broadly spaced and depending on their industry, they could they could have all kinds of connection connectivity challenges. And so very quickly you kind of get into a, okay, if we're going down a cloud model and we have an internet implication, what does that mean for failover? What does that mean for disaster recovery? What does that mean if the internet's down for two days? Can we still print? Yeah. Are things going to work? Printing cannot, we can't or not. And that could be harming uh, mm. the, 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 the business. That is why it's important also to understand. Yeah. Oh, related to Global Major Accounts, of course, uh, people that is taking care more of SMB in the in in the country like Spain or Sweden or Germany, well, that is we can take it for granted, like you said. Yeah, right. that it will not have an impact. So I wonder if you have some ideas on on the challenge for the for the sales teams, the account teams in our industry, because you you start by describing, hey, the customers are challenging us to these security things, and you you kind of throw out some acronyms like TLS and. Uh, and I'm sort of nodding because I've heard at a high level what what that stuff is, but but then you've also got this bandwidth failover challenge. You've also got the complexity of commercial models, and, and I think you also really started to describe not taking for granted that the way the customer does things today is the way they always do things. So you said they've got a data center. We kind of understand that in their strategy, and then the customer says, "Oh, we're moving away from that strategy." So so ask questions and probe. And how do you think the account teams? get on top of this, just, it's such a broad subject. It's such a challenging space for them to lead. Yeah. That, that, that the, the way that we are doing in Kanye Caminolta and, the, and, and, and the, above all in GBS in global business services is to address the mindset of our sales teams globally that are dealing not only with the, with the global major accounts, but also with the, even SMBs and corporate, local corporate accounts, public, uh, sector and so on is to understand which is the IT strategy behind. Each yeah. client has a, they have a past, they have a present post COVID, and also they want to move forward. They are already there. They are already moving completely to the cloud, which is the footprint that they, the, where, where, where they are right now. And that is true consultants. And the, and to place the questions, we are creating a lot of questionnaires, but we are not giving that questionnaire to the client. It's just open conversation to try to understand and see the signs. When the, the, that that uh, well, kind of even periodic account reviews that we have with our clients is not yeah. just everything is fine. No, no, no. It's trying to dig more. Okay, Be, because also in those companies, uh, a CMO has more influence than maybe the IT manager. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, 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 that. and then the human resources uh, also they have more because they now are concerned about security in the home office <laughs> on mm -hmm. the hybrid. And that is a, that we need to engage not only with the t traditional. A procurement uh, responsible in the NOx in the in the in the in the in the companies, but also to enlarge the, the the people that we are bringing to understand, and that is why I'm pushing me in the document life cycle to try to to see how how to handle that. But also with the technical constraints, to be as open and honest as possible means and not over promising. What the, even also very important for for global major accounts is the SLAs. The level of the service, the support, our retention rate of ninety-five uh, percent is because we put a lot of effort in the in the support, in the in the service that we are providing, from from the A to the Z means the complete life cycle of the MFP and beyond. That is also f fulfilling for the, the 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 for for the for the solutions and the platform. That is why also we have a very a very long relationship with Wisoft because Wisoft is also pushing a lot of efforts on that kind of uh, SLAs and 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 support uh, the, the client. And, and and when you have that kind of a change with the client, trying to see and to look for their footprint, global footprint in Europe and so on, some other countries, and try to have it, that awareness that maybe the SLA that you are giving in Germany, in UK, in Sweden, in Spain, will not be the same that you can provide maybe in, in Nigeria or maybe in uh, Argentina, and so on. That is that we need to take that into consideration. And I'm not meaning any country in specific, but I, I can go now oh. to. I, I spend my my vacations in 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 Portugal, in Spain, and I go to certain places 
that I don't have a, a, a good bandwidth or even access. Okay. This mm-hmm. is not collected, but yeah. you need to take the geographic, like you said, MFPs are there <laughs> on premise. They are not in the cloud. Okay. You can have access, but how do you access that, that, that tool and call it MFP or printer is the way that you will have a better relationship. Our focus is on that is what is, could be possible to cover with cloud thumbs up, what not then then have it as a hybrid model. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the, the way you started there with, if we can help the, the sales teams to understand the places to investigate, it's not quite buying signals, but it's like, let's get to understand the, the things the customers might start to describe as part of their past, present and future IT strategy where, okay, we need to go and probe there because that topic is an interesting topic and you need, you almost need to bring a perspective, right? Hey, Mr. Customer, I understand because of your business, you have these things. Have you considered this way to handle it? Or or what do you think about this way of addressing it and start to position maybe some education that customers don't know, right? Because customers don't necessarily, that they aren't necessarily going to be experts at everything that's happening in print. And so it's a, it's an interesting time, but also a challenging time to keep the account teams kind of current on those, those buying signals, those, those little, little hooks of information that the customers are dropping. Yeah, but, but that is critical because like, like, like you said, Anna, I mean, this is our core business. We need to do that effort. Our sales teams are doing that because if I'm talking to a construction company or a company that they, they are building bottles of wine, a glass right. bottle, okay, that, that is their core business. They expect me to help them how to print even the labels for the, for the, for the bottles, but, but to, to, to try to understand their uh, reality, how they, operation, how is their operation, how, how they have it in the factories and so on. That is what we need to understand is not that the good old times, maybe of how many people do you have? Oh, we have seven locations and uh, uh, 5,000 employees. Okay. That makes a ratio of eight employees per printer. This is it. This is <laughs> right. It. Yeah. And, yeah. And deploy that <laughs> no way that is over. Okay. Now we need to take into consideration it's more complex, like you said, but we are handling that with a lot of, like you said, also the education for the client to understand because there is some clients that they are saying, oh, how we move now, or because the print management process was very far away and we have been successful and we don't take care of that business process, which is the print management and the has been working until now very good, no accounting, people can print whatever they want, whenever they want. And uh, that's it, uh, direct yeah. printing. And uh, and uh, they go into some place, they have the IP of the device and they print. That's something that also there is still companies working well, in that, that sense. And that is what you said, the education says. There is, in your sector, companies that are doing this, this. And this is the ROI. And this is the benefits that we have. Also, but, that those companies, every big company nowadays, are with the, this in the spotlight with the sustainability things. And that also is a trigger to, to uh-huh. have a conversation to say, let's uh, optimize your, and be more efficient with your printing. Even that could be harming us and don't want, not so much toner, but, but Konica Minota is also a printing in the core, but also a, a, a service provider. Yeah. I think ultimately you have to be doing what's right for the customer, right? But yeah. as long as it, there's an industry trend that volumes are going down. There's there's plenty of price pressure around challenge with uh, with inflation in the economy as well. And so the accounting's jobs kind of harder than ever in those conditions. But I do think the, the way you're describing these different hooks, different ways to educate and guide a customer, it's kind of true sales. Instead of being an account rep who's just just taking orders and delivering prices, it's actually back to true sales, understanding customers in depth guiding customers on a journey and, and really showing customers what they can do differently. It's kind of an exciting. Yeah, yeah that, that is uh, absolutely. And I, I really appreciate what, what you said to me because my way and also in our team is to, to try to always uh, remove the, this kind of uh, provider and client, client provider mm-hmm. relationship and trying to bring it more for the partnership. The client is a partner. Yeah. They, they are helping us to survive and to move forward, but also we are helping them with our knowledge about this. They have, they, they need, it is a mutual relationship. Yeah. And also building that relationship is, is, is very important. Also we need, there is a 
certain kind of methodology that we use because we also, like you said, the traditional approach, like, oh, it's just taking orders and so on. And then you are missing uh, why the client kick you out. And uh, because you are not addressing the, the relationship, the strategy, the knowledge base that they have between you and me, you don't know how they appreciate you or how they know you, or how they see you, which is also important. In this sort of GMA space, do you, do you see customers looking for very customized offerings in print or do you see more of a standardization? We just want off the shelf as a service, press a button and the thing works the same in every place. No, we, we see more customization in, in, in that sense. There is still the standard approach, of course, but, uh, I, I see a lot of customization. Let's, let's put it this way, 70% on, on customization. There meaning no. they would take standard products and ask for different configurations or meaning yeah, they, they're even at the point where they're saying we need some development specific to our business. No, more on what you said before, just the uh, configuration of services configuration than, than, than no, no specifics in that sense, uh, because also specifics nowadays, uh, a vendor like uh, a uh, the, the platforms that you are handling are, are almost covering all the scope in that oh. kind of stuff. There is no, uh, that there has to be also the, the, a specific development. Also, the companies understand that is very complicated. I'll always also, we from the consultancy approach, we go deep in that kind of uh, mutual research to understand if it's needed or not, if there is a workaround or something. Yeah. And, and so you, I'm, I'm, my, my mind is drifting into sort of the implementation space. So, so a timescale is changing for implementation. If customers are saying, I'm taking a relatively standardized product, but I need the configuration to look like this and you need to meet my requirements. Are the expectations around implementation timescales changing? You kind of mentioned the COVID has accelerated things. Uh, print projects are faster these days, longer. How, how do you see that? Are faster. The, the, the projects nowadays are faster than it, they, 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 they were uh, before. Also talking about the cloud and also our side, how our own remote tools of maintenance and getting into those devices through the internet. Then those configurations and pushing MSI packages and so on through the customers and updating the firmwares is something that is already a rule and not an exception. Mm -hmm. also, that, that is another part that the clients understand and see as a benefit. Also the cloud platform. The, the, they have the, the, the latest version of a, a server, the latest version of the operating system, the latest version of everything is more easy to deploy instead of the, the, the old way to go embedded by embedded, having a technician hours and so yeah. on. that's a, a cost reduction. That's I, one of my sales teams was, was describing recently. One of the benefits they've seen of cloud is the standing up a POC it used to be a month long process where they would be like, okay, we need to unlock these ports. We need to configure the server this way. This is the trial environment. Yeah. And now it's like, hey, here's your username and password. Go get started. Exactly. exactly. And, and I'd never seen it that way. It kind of opened my eyes to them going, because I think often in, certainly as a sales guy coming into this stuff, you're going, so I've got to sell them something new that we haven't sold before. I'm likely to extend my sales cycle here. Often these things are ex solution sales. Typically it's, it's that balance between, uh, do I extend the sales cycle? Do I push for the renewal with what I've got? And actually it seems that moving to the cloud, one of these unseen benefits is that the POCs are now faster and the, yeah. the pre-sales teams can get this stuff set up the same day and have customers up yeah. and running and testing and talking to them about the result. And, and testing is believing. The people say seeing is believing, testing is believing. Also in that sense, we have been doing a lot of things. Uh, uh, my, uh, our team is, is, is pushing even pilots, not the POC, but pilots. Here you have it. We create for you just two or three devices. You taste it. Oh, can you open this also for this, our branch located in Denmark? Of course, in Denmark. Yes, we do it. And it's like you said, very fast, very easy. And that makes a, a benefit for the steps. The difference between a pilot and a POC in your mind, meaning the customers already more or less made the purchase commitment subject to being successful or. POCs are more, uh, proof of concept are more focused on what they have, on what they want to achieve. Uh, pilots, as I see it, are more look, uh, on the focus of showing 
maybe to a company that are using uh, um, on-premise uh, platform and they want to see it, how they can work with a, a cloud platform. That is more a pilot in that sense. Is how, how, how we see it, yeah? Pilot is more uh, trying to uh, show not only like that by PowerPoint, <laughs> like mm -hmm. having a very nice sales presentation full of features. Yeah, here you have it, but here you have the, 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 the platform itself for you to test it, yeah? In the past, like you said, NFR license, uh, server configuration, and so on, which is more complicated for uh, a pipe. And so I wonder if we look at the product offerings, where the print market space is, and I maybe your knowledge is specific to KM, but I, I don't want to think product or vendor specific, but what do you see the challenges are for the industry in going faster, getting customers on this journey or these transitions quicker? Like, are there things missing that you think is still a struggle to deliver or? Um, not struggling to deliver. I believe that we have been able to, 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 to move forward fast. Okay. Uh, together, uh, like in this case, I'm talking, like you said, according to Minota and Ysoft, we have been able to listening to, to check this and, and, and to develop accordingly. Okay. Also the rest of the vendors, of course, I, I talk yeah. with a lot of people and, uh, to, 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 to listen to that. And, uh, I, I don't see a constraint, yeah, on our side to be not be able to deliver. The things that we need to take into consideration is vulnerabilities. That is also a security topic, mm -hmm. very important for uh, the global major accounts. Okay, they 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 they, they can suffer a lot. Like um, two days ago, three days ago, just Air Europa, which is by the way a Spanish uh, airliner company. They have to re retrieve all the money back to all the people because there is a vulnerability and uh, they, they, they had an issue with the, um, with the um, CC, CVV, you know, the code that you have behind you your uh, credit yeah. card, they have it stored in an open source and, uh, and they have now the hackers, they have number of credit cards and, uh, and the CVV also, and they claim we return the money, but uh, please cancel your, your, your credit cards. All the people. Oh, it's so complicated. But this kind of vulnerability is, is one of our major major concerns that, that that we need to keep developing our tools more reliable in that in that sense. Yeah. Okay, to be able to push for the the um, the, the the cloud. That is the major, let's say, constraint or or disadvantage that I face in a meeting with a client. Yeah, is a, a security topics. I think that's a, a challenge for all of us. The yeah, as, as much I, I don't as see the, a technological barrier. I believe that we are able to develop a lot of things, and we have been uh, doing that. But um, yeah, it's it's communication, it's right? It's it's how yeah. it seems that the technology moves on at an incredible rate, and our yeah. our R and D teams and technical teams doing a wonderful job. Yeah, but actually, as I look at myself as a marketing leader, how how well are we able to educate the sales teams we work with, the channel sales teams, because everything's through partners for us, but yep. also the customers themselves, these are the requirements you should be asking for, and this is how to answer those requirements. And this is what the hell it means, because at times the security topics, like I, I can start to dive into things like zero trust, and at some point I get yeah. lost. I'm like, I'm, I hang on, I, I don't <laughs> exactly. Wow. exactly. I, so I, the, I try to, to be updated, but this is amazing, uh, the speed of technology, yeah. and, and also to, to try for us to understand <laughs> then to to talk to our sales teams and say this is it, yeah, and how to address even, uh, let's say, uh, a speech that could be an advantage and 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 show value to the client and why, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but but we 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 are we are working on that and very successful. I I have to say, like I said at the beginning, improving sustainability to have the cloud. There is benefits that sometimes we are not saying, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, yeah. And yeah, that is, uh, I always have a sentence that I have been using sometimes with tough clients. Like they said, oh, cloud, very insecure. No, no, no. I will not uh, trust to put any document of myself in the cloud. And I always used to say, yeah, okay. We, you have been using the cloud for many, many years. Oh, how you say that? Yeah. Okay. Do, do you receive your payroll? Uh, every time, every month they call you to an office and said, here you have the envelope with your payroll, take it. And you take the money home, 
or you receive just a notification by mail or by SMS that your payroll is in the bank. Mm. Have you seen that money? You haven't seen that money for years. <laughs> you know, it's making years. It just receive a notification that somebody has your money. And it is one of the more important yeah. things that we have. Yeah. And uh, that is in the cloud. <laughs> somebody said, yeah, yeah that yeah. money is there. Yeah. My, and, uh, my team and, are pushing on the document side saying, well, but it's it's all in either Microsoft 365, it's in SharePoint, it's in Outlook, it's it's all in the cloud. So yeah, saying yeah. the printed document can't be in the cloud doesn't make any sense if everything else is, all the digital documents are stored there anyway. Exactly. That it is just has to be about communicating yeah. the security value, right? <laughs> yeah, I believe that that is already gone. That part, that fear is almost <laughs> not there. And now is coming the efficiency and the security. Okay, perfect, that is it. But I need to have more assurance. And yeah, also yeah. for us and the, and for Ysoft and for Konegami Ota, it's very critical when we commit to the clients because the clients are not dumb, you know, very smart people, and they, they, they have penalties and so on. It says if you mess, and we have also GDPR on there are in the spotlight with us, and say if we mess, that is a critical situation for, for yeah. the company. And that is it, it, it is quite important to, to, to address. But like you said, Development things are doing a, a great job uh, taking care of that. Yeah. So, so I wonder if if we kind of move to a conclusion here. Um, I talked to you about our our tagline at Ysoft of no print management, and and I worry that sometimes no print management can be interpreted in a way where we're not taking these things seriously enough, or we're not doing enough of these things because because you're talking about some really business critical changes, right? Looking for organizations looking to change the way they work accelerating those decisions around those changes, but also huge, huge security implications and controls required. How do you see no print management as a message to the market? How do you see it addressing those things? I, I see it in a very, very strong message, but it's my personal opinion, because uh, maybe some of the customers that I have been talking to and also our team, that they, they will be, that, that will ring the bell because no print management means I take care. I have the tools in place. I have the platform in place that is fulfilling what we have been to, uh, uh, talking to. We have been we have been uh, talking today about security and 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 TLS and all the things around that to to make a reliable platform with the access bandwidth. What is happening is no print management. You don't have to worry about that. Your infrastructure will not be in your side. Will be in our side. Our responsibility and that is no print management. You don't have to management the print the yeah. print is already there and the customization that you want and the users and so on and these workflows are there and the the print policies are there done no print management is is how i see it in the conclusion also bringing the, the this not trend but the, the the rule of the cloud now to the print management means that for the clients the the, the statement no print management is that you don't have to worry about that that yeah. we are taking care with the reliable tools that are very easy to automate and to fulfill your requirements is as I see it. I, I like that as a conclusion. That's that's an excellent conclusion. Felipe, thank you very much for your time today. Um, that's thank been you, really Adam. Great. It was a pleasure and anytime. Yeah. Thank you.